Hello everyone, it's Johnny Catru, and today I'm listening to the brand new self-titled album from Vince Staples. Vince Staples is a Californian hip-hop artist, and I think I first heard him when he did a feature on Earl Sweatshirt's first mixtape back in 2010, but it was on the song Hive from Earl's debut album that I was first really impressed with Vince. His verse on that one was just so cold. I guess in those early days I just figured he was a affiliate of Odd Future though and that was about it. But some years later I had the radio one, which is quite unusual for me, I don't listen to a lot of radio. I think it was Beats 1 when the station had just launched so I was curious. And I hear this incredible darkly atmospheric track with this really compelling vocal. When the song ends they said it was Vince Staples and I couldn't believe it. That song was North North from his debut album and the song was produced by Clams Casino who I was already a huge fan of at the time. So of course I had to hear the debut album from Vince at that point and that album was Summertime 06. To be honest though I was quite disappointed with the album. It was kind of over long and nothing on it really lived up to the promise of North North for me. I was quite a bit more into his follow-up album Big Fish Theory in 2017 which was bizarrely dancey but also quite adventurous and I just thought it was overall a much stronger project. The following year he put out an even shorter album called FM and there was even some confusion around whether it was an actual album or an EP. I really enjoyed the lead single from that album, Fun. It was a really cool track but overall I was a little bit disappointed with the album again. I kind of hoped we'd get something a bit more ambitious from Vince next time around. It looks like this new album is another only 20 minutes long album though, so I'm not sure what to think going into it based on that. The singles he put out for this new album were pretty good though. And I still think he's an interesting artist worth following, so let's see what he's got for us this time around. If you enjoy the video, do me a favor and click the like button. And let's get into this. Track one is called, Are You With That? To get a little bread, shoot a couple niggas in the head, still outside. Alright, so that one was put out as a single just a couple days ago and I only got around to hearing it once before hearing the album and I did like it on first listen. But it is quite an unusual track. It's kind of bizarrely optimistic sounding, despite the lyrics being kind of full of gangster shit. It seems to be like a nostalgic trip back for Vince. That seems to be the theme of the song. But yeah, I really like the sound. It seemed like he had this beat that has this rather nostalgic sound and then he put lyrics on that that went with it perfectly. And it's pretty memorable too. So yeah, pretty nice track and a good opener. The next song was released as the first single. So I've heard it a couple times. It's track two and it's called Law of Averages. Bad bitch, there we have, locust have, how you average. I call my 38, kiss your baby in the face if you... All right, so that was Law of Averages, and yeah, I really like that song from the first time I heard it. I especially love the beat on this one, and I just saw that this whole album is produced by Kenny Beats. I didn't realize that before. I really like that when uh, one producer handles all the beats for an album. Most of the classics, if you look back, have that going on. And when I first heard the, the beat of this one, the sample, it sounded to me like something Jay Paul might have done the UK artist, and then I thought, oh, maybe it's James Blake. But, uh, you know, I think I pretty much know all the songs from both those artists, and I don't recognize this one. But I looked it up, and it seems to be another artist, but they definitely have, to me, that kind of UK bassy sound. But yeah, the beat sounds great, and Vince, I mean, it suits him perfectly. It's got the vibe I love hearing from Vince. So, we've already had the first two singles, but it's really got the album off to a great start, I think. But now we can move into the songs we haven't heard yet. And track three is called Sundown Town. Yeah, see if I pull it out, I'ma send a nigga to the crowd, watch them. All right, so that was another nostalgic vibe on that song. I really like how the album has this consistent tone so far. And again, Vince put very personal sounding lyrics on top. So it's starting to really make sense that Vince chose to self-title this album. I'm really getting the feeling it's his most personal yet. Maybe that song wasn't quite as strong as the first two, but like I say, the fact that it continues the vibe and the theme means that the album is working for me so far. So let's move on to track four. It's called The Shining. 
Ask when I'ma move to Malibu or Calabasas. I can't never do it, I'm too packed with shit. Okay, so this song was a bit darker, a little bit heavier, you know, heavier from the bass end. And still with that storytelling from Vince. I feel like his delivery was maybe a bit too sleepy on this one though. I feel like it's working for the vibe so far, but if the album's gonna work on the whole, he's gonna need to do something punchy eventually. You know, wake the album up a bit. That's what it needs at this point, I think. The next song, track five, is called Taking Trips. <laughs> Okay, interesting. Yeah, I liked that one. It did hit a bit harder as needed, although again, still keeping that kind of dreamy nostalgia vibe that the album has had so far. There was something a bit psychedelic going on as well. And with the lyrics about tripping, obviously that works pretty well. There seemed to be a bit of theme of peer pressure in the music as well, you know? Reminds me of The Art of Peer Pressure by Kendrick Lamar, rapping about wanting to be accepted by the guys and everything and with this slightly surreal atmosphere. But still, this is nothing too far out of the ballpark for Vince. This is, you know, a kind of delivery he's given us before. But I do think it's what he does best for the most part. So the next song is only a minute long. It's called The Apple and the Tree. All right, so yeah, that was just an interlude and Obviously the title being the apple and the tree, I assume it's saying the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I was thinking it's relating to Vince not being different from his parents. So my assumption was that that's his mum talking there, giving the attitude of, I don't give a fuck, I'll do what I need to do. But actually I have no idea if that was really his mother, but you know, obviously it could be anyone from his neighborhood just portraying that his life has not been so different from the life of those that came before him the impression I get. Obviously it fits in with the theme of the album of him looking back over his life. All right, so let's move on to the next song, track seven. It's called Take Me Home. One, two, three. Yeah. All right, so this was the longest song so far, still under three minutes though. And Vince sounded great on this one. And the song actually had a hook, unlike all the tracks before it. Well, I think so anyway. I didn't think it was the most memorable hook, but it sounded good and it fit the vibe that the whole album has had, you know, that kind of dreamy nostalgia thing again. Vince was talking about his hometown, you know, again, looking back over his time. And yeah, although I didn't find it to be super memorable, I did find this track to be pretty satisfying you know, and really a culmination of stuff he'd been doing on the album so far. So yeah, pretty good song. Let's move on to track eight, it's called Lil Fade. Pretty interesting ending there really emphasizing the psychedelic vibe that's tinged this whole album so far. To be honest though, I found this song a bit underwhelming. I mean, it was okay. It's just not really doing anything that we haven't already heard previously on the album. We've only got a couple songs left now and I'm just hoping that the last one has something new to offer. But the next one is track nine and it's only a minute long, so maybe another interlude. It's called Lakewood Mall. Nigga met this nigga at the McDonald's at Lakewood Mall. Yeah, so that was another interlude. Again, just painting the same kind of picture that he's been painting for the album so far, with a sample in the background that keeps the mood going. So let's get into the last song. It's track 10 and it's called Mm-hmm. Trying to make it in the game, you gotta know the glitches. I ain't got a disc, cause you know what it is, cause. Until you get back to Cherry, that's all the hood. They homie. All right, so that's the end of the album and we ended it off with mm-hmm. And yeah, I was quite pleased with that last song, you know? It was pretty memorable. It continued the vibe of the album, but had its own thing going on. And I felt it wrapped it up well. It worked well as a last song. I mean, it wasn't exactly a huge closer or anything, but it's, it's kind of a humble album anyway, you know? It's 
somewhat introverted sounding and not with too much fanfare around it. So yeah, it, it sums it up well in that way. And yeah, you know, the album is surprisingly satisfying considering how short it is, you know? It feels like I've listened to an album, even though it's only the length of maybe a, an EP. And I think I did find it more satisfying than his last album, FM, which did feel a bit thrown together to me. This one felt, I think because it's so cohesive, it kept the themes and the sound going throughout. It really felt that the album worked as a whole. So I really enjoyed it for that. Maybe I wish there could have been a couple more hard hitting songs not necessarily hard hitting, but just something a bit more memorable, a bit more impactful. It felt a little bit wishy-washy sometimes, the album. Obviously he is going for, as I've said, that kind of dreamy vibe, and it does work. I guess I just wish some of the songs were going to stick with me a bit more after first listen. It'll be interesting to see how I feel about it after a few more listens. But on this first listen, yeah, I do feel it was a cool album with an interesting sound. And I guess I just like how deliberate it feels. It feels like he had an idea of what he wanted the album to be and he delivered on it. I hear he's got another album in the works already. So I hope that comes out not too far away. It will be interesting to see how different the sound is from this one. Cause my assumption is that, you know, like he could have just put all these songs together with more songs to make a longer album. But my assumption is that he feels that these songs work well together as they are. And I think he's probably right, but obviously we'll have to see what he comes out with next to see about that. So if you've enjoyed this video, please click the like button. And if you want to support me to help me keep the channel going, you can use the link in the description to buy me a coffee. It really helps me to keep making these videos. And thank you very much for watching. Until next time, take it easy.